How's it going everyone? Connor here with The Diamond, and welcome to another episode of The Greatest Game I Ever Saw. The show where I talk to interesting people from around the baseball world about the greatest games they ever saw. Today on the program, my guest is Baseball Historian, a fellow baseball YouTuber with over 25,000 subscribers to his name, whose work often focuses on the interesting and often untold stories of baseball's past. But beyond being a successful YouTuber, he is also a die-hard Yankees fan. And so, I sat down with him to discuss the greatest game that he remembers seeing, which was the 2017 AL wildcard game between the New York Yankees and the Minnesota Twins. Hope you enjoy. Dylan, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's no problem. It's our pleasure. So today we're going to be talking about the 2017 American League wildcard game between the Yankees and the Twins. Obviously a lot to talk about with this game. There was certainly a lot of action, especially in those first four innings or so. And we'll get to all of that later on in the episode. But to start things off today, I just want to ask you, why did you choose this game out of all the ones that you've seen as the greatest you've ever saw? Okay, so... As a Yankees fan born post late the late 90s dynasty, I really haven't been witness to the quote-unquote great uh, Yankees games of the past. So when you asked me to pick the favorite my favorite game, this was the one that came to mind because as again as a Yankees fan who really has only known the post dynasty years I think 2017 has been the closest they've gotten to returning to the World Series since 2009 and I think it was really one of the last uh, fun years I can it was probably the most fun season I can remember being a Yankees fan um and I think that wild card game just perfectly encapsulated the 2017 season for me. I absolutely agree with you that that wild card game definitely encapsulated the energy of the 2017 Yankees. But I do want to ask you a little bit about 2009. Uh, was were you just a little bit too young then to fully grasp what was going on, or you just hadn't become fully a Yankees fan yet? What was uh? What was your recollection of that 2019? So in 2009, I was nine years old uh, when the Yankees won. Growing up in South Jersey, the idea of a Yankees Phillies World Series, I think, was, is always, um, I think, in the back of baseball fans' minds. So for it to happen in 2009 was a pretty big deal uh, where I was from. Of course, I was uh, still a little too young to fully grasp uh, the momentousness of, if that's a word, of the series. Um, but that is, I think, burned into my mind as a foundational baseball memory for me. And it's probably the first time I remember watching Major League Baseball, watching every game like staying up late to watch every single game of that series yeah i can totally understand that so was that the moment you started to really become a yankees fan or did that come a little bit later um i think from birth i've been a yankees fan um it's kind you're kind of not allowed any other option <laughs> uh in my family um fair enough so I think the 2009 World Series was probably, you could say, my first actual step into being an active Yankees fan, aside from it just being a state of being. Absolutely. And I mean, obviously a little bit of a, a rough stretch after that World Series, but 2017, it was a really fun Yankees team. I mean, that entire season you had the emergence of Aaron Judge as one of, if not the best player in the American League in his rookie season. You had Didi Gregorius having a career year. Just a really good group of guys. A lot of a lot of really fun guys on that squad. Could you just talk a little bit about how you felt as a fan during that season and what that experience was like? 
Yeah, so I would say for a little bit of context, I had kind of as I have always been a baseball fan, but I had kind of fallen off of Major League Baseball, following Major League Baseball for a few years. Probably not coincidentally those same years the, that the Yankees were struggling. Um, but around 2015 was when I started to really get back into following Major League Baseball and the Yankees specifically. So by 2017, I think you were kind of seeing the emergence of the Baby Bomber collection of players. They were kind of moving on from the core four, Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, CC Sabathia led squad into, as you said, the Aaron Judge, uh, Gary Sanchez, Didi Gregorius, uh, like that core. And I think 2017 was the first year you really saw that fun group start to emerge. And I think a lot of Yankees fans really kind of came back because of that. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, as a Dimebags fan, you're welcome for Didi, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Didi, Didi is just, he's one of my favorite Yankees, I think, of the past few years and I was disappointed to see him go he might not be you know Carlos Correa or one of the top shortstops in the league but I think his presence on the Yankees during that time can't be understated its importance to that team yeah and he's just such a really good guy I mean he's just such a great presence on any ball club so I totally 100% agree with you he's one of my favorite players to watch as well but obviously 2017 career year for him and for a lot of those Yankees on that team you guys make the wild card game maybe not the exact outcome you would have wanted but obviously you had to have felt good going into that game right yeah I mean going in they ended the season I think on a pretty good run so going into the wild card game part of the reason this game hit me like it did was that I wasn't expecting really any trouble as a Yankees fan and I know I it sounds kind of almost arrogant to say it but it was the Yankees playing the Twins in the wild card game I think most Yankees fans were looking beyond that game so when it started and we'll get into it but as the game went on and we started to see like oh the Yankees are actually like about to lose this game I think a lot of fans were taken aback because the Yankees have not lost to the Twins in a playoff game in it's got to be well over 15 years at this point yeah <laughs> yeah we'll we'll leave it at that because this episode's already going to be painful enough for Twins fans out there so Let's get into the actual game itself, but before we do, I want to do a quick little detour into the starting lineups for this game, because even though this was just four years ago, man, there are some remember some guys' names in these lineups here. So obviously for the Yankees, we have the big guys at the top of the lineup. You have Gardner, Judge, Sanchez, and Didi, but then you get into some blasts from the past here. How about... Second baseman, Starlin Castro. Yeah. <laughs> First baseman, Greg Bird. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Uh, D.H. Jacoby Ellsbury, who is that, still on mm, the Yankees at that time. I didn't even remember he was still on the Yankees at that time. Oh, yeah. This is <laughs> Jacoby Ellsbury. That's a real, like, yeah. remember that guy. Because absolutely that yeah. that whole Yankees tenure obviously got to be a little bit painful for Yankees fans so we'll drop the subject at that but uh <laughs> the other guy I wanted to talk about third baseman Todd Frazier yes the man himself the Little League World Series legend yep stood next to uh Derek Jeter got a picture with him if I remember correctly I don't know if they ever talk about it on broadcast but I feel like that would be a good thing to bring up maybe on like Sunday Night Baseball whenever they're talking about Todd Frazier they could 
I've never seen them do it. I, I wish it's one of those things that I think they should hit on more when they're doing broadcasts. It's that. Um, also that Jack Flaherty and Max Fried went to the same high school with, uh, was it Lucas Giolito? Um, I just, I think it's one of those facts that they don't um, bring up often enough, and I wish they did more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I heard once that Frazier won the Little League World Series, and they, like, never show any pictures or videos from that. So I just find that kind of weird. So totally agree with you there, but... Pitching matchup, we have Irvin Santana for the Twins and Luis Severino for the Yankees. So, given those lineups in mind, do you remember how you felt going into that game? Like, how did you feel about Severino going in, and how did you feel about your chances against Santana? Uh, I was feeling good. Um, Severino was coming off of what is still probably his best season. Uh, If I remember correctly, I think he finished third in the Cy Young voting in 2017. So going in as a Yankees fan, looking at it like Severino versus Santana, first off, Irvin Santana, 35 years old at that point, basically uh, one foot in the grave for a baseball player against the young uh, 100 mile an hour fireballer Luis Severino. I was feeling pretty good. Looking at our lineups, I mean, you've got Aaron Judge, Gary Sanchez. Like, I was fully expecting at least five or six solid innings from Luis Severino going into that game. And I wasn't thinking Irvin Santana was going to be too much of a threat to this Yankees lineup. So, all in all, I was feeling very confident going into this game. And I mean, rightfully so, but I, I did have to give a little bit of a chuckle when you said that you expected Severino to go six or seven, because as we both know now, he did not get past the first inning here. Very first batter of the game, fly ball to left center field for a home run to start off the game. How are you feeling after that opening gut punch? That moment. I think will be burned into my that's a core baseball memory for me (laughs) is that home run from Brian Dozier because previously like 2016 the Yankees had missed the playoffs altogether and 2015 they had been knocked out in the wild card it had been a few solid years since the Yankees had made a good playoff run so for the first at bat of the playoffs to turn out to end up with Brian Dozier hitting a fastball that couldn't have been lower than his chin over the left field fence. I think, yeah, no, uh, the air was completely knocked out of my body (laughs) from that. Like I think. Yeah. And you, and you weren't the only one based on the reaction of the stadium there. And of course it only got worse from there. Another home run. And now it's three, nothing. Severino's already out of the game. Chad Green comes in, and now you're facing basically a crisis as a Yankees fan. Like, did you think that the Yankees had any chance of coming back from that, heading out of that top of the first inning? As Severino was taken out and they put Chad Green in, it wasn't as much that I didn't, it wasn't so much that I didn't think the Yankees could tie the game back up what I didn't think was possible was for the pitching staff to hold the twins for nine or eight more innings with Severino out of the game because they were counting on Severino to carry them through like I said at least five innings Um, so the fact that Chad Green was in the game before the first inning was even over I think I was pretty despondent at that point to be honest Yeah, and obviously this is not something that any team wants to deal with. This was, I mean, this was 2017, but even then it was still before bullpen games really became like a dominant strategy in the playoffs. You really didn't see a whole lot of openers even to that point. So it totally makes sense why you're a little nervous there. I mean, besides the fact that you're down 3 nothing, but obviously the Yankees, they punch right back. You head into that inning, you're down 3 nothing. you get a walk and a single to start off the inning and a foul pop-up for the first out. And up to the plate steps 
Didi Gregorius. Now, obviously, he's been having a great season at that point, career year for him, but did you have a sense of what was going to come before it happened? <sighs> Trying to put myself back in that place. Because, like you said, I think Gardner had worked a pretty good uh, at-bat to lead off the game. And then Judge had followed it up with, uh, I think he just wrestled a single out to, like, the shallow shallow outfield. I was probably counting on Gary Sanchez to carry us through to score at least one of those runs. So when he popped out... And the next batter was Didi Gregorius, followed by Starling Castro, Greg Bird. I think I what I think I was just a, like the most I could have hoped for was another single or a walk to just keep them moving around the bases. But I think what came next um, was the last thing I would have predicted. So you're saying you weren't expecting a home run out of prolific power hitter Starlin Castro? Uh, no, I, I'm not going to apologize to Scar- Starlin Castro, but <laughs> I wasn't expecting uh, really much of anything from him. <laughs> I, I was, if someone was going to do something, it was going to be one of those first uh, three, four batters was how I was looking at it. But obviously, luckily for you, Didi connected with one, hit one deep into the night in right field for a home run, ties up the game. From my perspective, I think that's probably the loudest I've ever heard Yankee Stadium on a broadcast. I don't know if it's the loudest they've ever had at New Yankee Stadium, but that was honestly one of the most electric moments I've ever witnessed as a baseball fan. So I want to hear from you what that experience was like watching that ball go out of the yard as a Yankee fan. Okay, so Didi Gregorius is not known as a power hitter. And when he does hit home runs, if you look at his career spray chart, I don't think he's ever hit a home run to the opposite field. So what that means is when he does connect on one, he has a very specific swing and you can tell basically off the bat when Didi Gregorius hits one of his few home runs that he does hit. And this was one of those swings. So as soon as he made contact, you can see on the broadcast the fans behind home plate start to stand up. From home, watching on the television, I don't think I really got a sense for how wild Yankee Stadium was going until they cut to the shot of the ball actually leaving the field going into the stands they like you'll hear stories about how the old Yankee Stadium you know the one that was built back in you know the 20s would actually shake when the fans got excited I I think This home run was one of the few instances where I think the new Yankee Stadium has experienced a similar moment. Um, Again, and rightfully so. uh, I mean, that's a huge moment. I don't think you could uh, think of a better reason or a better moment um, for something like that to happen. Yeah, and actually, according to Baseball Reference, that is the single biggest swing of the game. Obviously, a lot going on there, and now it's a brand new ball game heading into the second. And at that point, they're still trading blows here and there. We have the Twins scoring one in the third. You have the Yankees scoring another in the second and the third. You're entering the bottom of the fourth inning. It's a 5-4 to four ball game at this point. Obviously, the Yankees have the lead, but, you know, it's still a very close game. It's very much a title fight going on here with blows being thrown left and right. So, how are you feeling heading into that bottom of the fourth with the top of the lineup heading up? Okay, so 5-4 lead. Bringing it back around to, like, at this point, I think they've got David Robertson in. He's since taken over for Chad Green, who did 
a phenomenal job. I think that was what first really put Chad Green. Uh, that was his first real moment in the spotlight, I think, as a Yankee. Um, but, of course, a one-run lead in a playoff game is nothing. So, heading into the bottom of the fourth, you had this feeling that they would need to do something soon because at any moment the Twins were going to put together something and have a rally of their own. So there was definitely a sense of uh, anxiety. Just that, that anxiety, I think, was palpable. Yep, so totally understand that anxiety. It makes sense why you would feel that, especially since you've got essentially a bullpen game going on you don't really know what's going to come next, but you head into the bottom of the fourth. You get Todd Frazier striking out swinging, but then you get a single left field from Brett Gardner, and then here comes big Aaron Judge. Yep. <laughs> Obviously, phenomenal 2017. He certainly got a lot of MVP chance and some MVP votes as well as his Rookie of the Year title. What are your thoughts on Judge's 2017, and what were you feeling when he went up to that bat? Um, so Aaron Judge in 2017, I think, was by far the Yankees' biggest story. I don't think anyone could argue with that. Throughout like the first half of Aaron Judge's 2017 season, I think is probably the best I've seen someone play baseball. But then the second half, you know, everyone, I feel like everyone who was paying attention kind of knows the story that he was out of this world, unparalleled, like by far the best baseball play player on the planet. First half of 2017. Second half, he falls off from his first half production. He's still a way above average baseball player, but he's not matching that level of production in the second half of 2017. So I think generally... Going into the playoffs, people were very curious to see how he would perform in his first postseason appearance. Um, well, he certainly answered the call there. Yeah. Honestly, the ball he hit was probably one of the hardest hit balls that I've ever seen. I don't know what the stat cast reading said on that ball, but the ball he hit couldn't have gone more than 15 feet off the ground the entire way. So... When he connected with that baseball to put up the Yankees by a score of 7-4, to four, you know, what were you thinking at that time? Like, what was your reaction when that ball went off the bat? When the ball leaves Aaron Judge's bat, there's always this uh, worry in my the back of my head that he's this is the one that's going to actually physically injure someone. And I think that hit was probably where it was most uh, present because he really, he he hit that ball. Annihilated he, it. Uh, annihilated it. The, like, the fact that it was still intact enough to make it to the stands, I think, is a miracle in and of itself. I don't know how he doesn't uh, rip the cover, actual cover, off the baseball every time he makes solid contact, but... When he hit that home run, that was the first uh, point in that entire game where I was actually able to slow down and take a breath and think, you know, okay, I think we might actually pull this out. Yeah, and that makes sense. And by the way, I really hope whoever caught that ball or was directly in front of it in the stands, I really hope they were okay because that had to have been a scary sight. But obviously... Yeah, the Yankees got a little bit of breathing room there, and it looked like they just didn't really look back. I mean, there were still some scary moments here and there. I mean, you had Maurer come up to the plate in one of his final at-bats and almost hit one out of right field to tie up the game. But for the most part, the, the back half of this game certainly wasn't as action-packed as those first four-and-a-half innings were, so... Do you recall what you were doing during that time? I mean, obviously you were still watching the game, but were you still kind of gripped by that anxiety or did you take a little bit of a 
deep breath and just step back a little bit? I think for the few innings after the Aaron Judge home run, I was able to look away from the screen and recollect myself uh, for the end of the game. And I think throughout the game, the Yankees used five pitchers, if I'm remembering correctly. It was Severino, Chad Green, David Robertson, Tommy Canley at this point. And then they finished off with Aroldis Chapman. Every time they would bring in a new pitcher, I could feel it again in the back of my head. Like, is this going to be the one? Is he not going to be on? Is he not going to have his stuff tonight? But each one of them, uh, by them, I mean everyone that's not named Luis Severino, was just 100% locked on, it seemed, that night. Like, Chad Green came in dominated. David Robertson picked right up where he left off. And then Tommy Canley came in. If there's someone I miss from that 2017 team and that era of Yankees baseball, it's Tommy Canley. And I think the uh, I think Major League Baseball is better with Tommy Canley in it. But when Tommy Canley came in and shut down his however many, like three or so innings that he pitched... I was able to sit back and actually enjoy the game for those moments. Then they brought Chapman in, and all bets are off when that happens. I mean, that's fair enough. Although I think a lot of that is due to to a lot of um, confirmation bias that people have. Because when you think about Chapman, I think the first thing in a lot of people's minds is the blow-ups, right? Even though they might be very few and very far between... You know, you often think about, say, like the Altuve homer in 2019 and the Rajay Davis home run in 2016, you know, really, really big moments on the national stage. So I, I totally get where you're coming from there. But, hey, he, he got the job done, got you a clean inning, and you're on to the ALDS. So the question then becomes... Now that the Twins were out of the way and the Yankees were officially into the postseason, or at least the real postseason at that point, what were your expectations then? Did you think that this was a team that could make it all the way to the World Series and win, or were you just kind of seeing what happens? This was actually legitimately a team that I thought could have won it all. I think if you were to pick a Yankees team from the past five years to have the best shot at winning the World Series, it would have been this 2017 team. And in that moment, I was as confident as I have been as a Yankees fan that they were going to make it to the World Series and win. So when that didn't happen, it would be an understatement to say that I was disappointed. Yep, I totally get that. And especially with what we know now about the team that eventually went on to win that World Series. I mean, I imagine it had to have added an extra layer to that gut punch. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where at the time, even as a Yankees fan, you couldn't help but like feel a little bit happy for the Astros because they were coming off of this legacy of losing and Houston had been through so much that year. Oh yeah. In retrospect, it's infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, say the to, least. To say the least. Um but in that moment, um or at that time to lose to the Astros was merely disappointing yeah and i think that's a good point on that but i guess to end things off on a little bit of a happier note here i i do have to ask how did you celebrate that win like were you watching this with your family were you with friends i i know you said you were at home watching the game so did you go out in the streets and party like what was <laughs> the vibe like i think i was at home with my family watching that had I been out at, you know, a friend's house or at, you know, a sport, like, watching that in a public place, I probably would have had to been had to have been restrained um, <laughs> in my excitement. Um, but 
being home, I had no other choice but to celebrate with my much less enthusiastic, relatively, uh, family. Well, so they got, at least they got to, you got yeah, to celebrate. They like, got you to got to be my, excited for it. They got to enjoy my enjoyment of that game. You know, that's a good way to put it. And I, I think that's a really good note to end on. So, Dylan, I want to thank you again for joining us on the program. I really appreciate it once again. And uh, please tell the people where you can be found. For sure. Uh, you can find me at YouTube at Baseball Historian. And follow me on Twitter at Baseball HSTRM because hist- Baseball Historian is too long for the Twitter username uh, character limit. <laughs> so those are where you'll find me hanging out. All right. Thank you once again. Baseball Historian, everyone. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Thank you. <laughs>